So our experience at Musselburgh Races was quite fantastic. Amazing sunshine and what a spectacle, but not the easiest of material to work with. Moving horses, uh, everything happening at once. So what I thought might be the most useful thing for this presentation would be to show you a couple of possibilities of compositions that I would make out of the fairly limited material that I've got. I'll do them in charcoal and pastel and when you come to the studio on Monday uh, you may want to work on a pastel painting or you might want to do an oil sketch. In either case I think it would be worth doing a little bit of a study of the sort that I'm showing you now uh, just to get started. So I'm going to work with these two horses and riders and I want to put them together probably in a fairly sort of um, horizontal composition using the it's the finish li finishing line and the the rails of the of the racetrack as as my my background as my setting and I thought I would like to have as I have in the sketches uh, the white horse going from right to left and the brown horse going in the other direction. So to get a sense of movement, that would be one thing. So in doing this study, I'm just putting out, you know, kind of rough continuous line outline. I always do the legs last because they're very complicated and I'm not going to make too much of them yet until I start. Um, have some other aspects of the drawing working. So that's my white horse and rider. And then I thought in order to get a sense of scale, um, I want to actually have the other horse and rider much larger. So in the foreground, and as I do this, I realize that I'm not going to get it all on, but I'm trying to be somewhat influenced by some of those Degas compositions, which I will have sent you in the email, the email brief for this session. And I'm therefore quite happy to have figures cropped and um, my main aim was to get this overlap between the two, the two figures, the two, um, the two horses, the two riders. Now there's, there's more to do to that because they're a little bit out of proportion. I think I also wanted to work out where this head would arrive uh, in relation to the other horse and rider. I don't mind covering up his, his boots, but I wouldn't want, wouldn't, Want, I've wanted to lose too much of other parts of that figure. So I'll just make this a little bit, I'll, I'll make some adjustments. And again, you can see this is, you know, the, the reason for doing it in charcoal and not, not developing one more than the other until I, I see how they work together. But even at this stage, I'm reasonably happy that there is this sense of movement of one going this way, one going that way, all following the sort of horizontal line of the uh, rail of the course. There's other things to work out, of course, um, to do with colour and, uh, you know, perhaps I'll need some more, more reference material to get things like the horse's legs working in the way that I want them to. But I'll just strengthen that now a little bit and then look at some colour. So that's more or less what I want um, for this charcoal stage. Um, I refined some of the figures a bit, did some smudging, uh, added some shadows um, and filled in, filled in some of the, the darker tonal shapes, saddles and the finishing line um, Musselburgh racecourse logo. So I'm going to spray it and put some colour on. There are still things that I'm not quite happy with. A terrible habit of, of putting, making the legs look like pantomime horse legs, uh, but I'm sure everyone had similar 
experiences. Horses' legs are probably the hardest bit, which is why I leave them to the end. And I think actually in this drawing, these are some of the best legs because I didn't really define them. So I think there's a there's a um, a tip in there of how to solve that issue. I'll spray it and put some colour on. So as ever, it's best to start with some of the larger areas, just blocking in some colour with hatched a hatched mark. That's so so working with the big areas, you know, working from the general to the particular. And also hatching so that I've got just a bit of an idea of how these colours are going to work without sort of committing or fixing anything. I mean, if this were to go on to be a pastel, a pastel painting, then I could go back and build things up. But this is really just me trying to see can this composition work and using uh, blocking in of colour you know colours based on what I have in my sketches from Musselburgh using them as my starting point so actually that was a white horse And this business, for example, of, of legs, you know, just by hatching loosely like that, the edges aren't defined and I can find those edges gradually. I'll, I might be able to just work them out once I see how the different colours behave and how, how the, the drawing comes together. I might work them out or I might just have to get some reference material um, to to work them out so I haven't chosen terribly exciting colors really given how amazingly colorful these jockeys were but that's just giving me a bit of an idea then of whether that composition can work and if I decided it can and I wanted to keep it then uh, I would go on building things up or perhaps you know start on a bigger scale this is just an A4 drawing I haven't done anything in the background because I think my grey paper uh, is sufficient but if this were the larger version because I would start the larger version in exactly the same way. If it were the larger version, then I would go from this blocking in stage to uh, adding more pastel, more colour, and building things up, bringing out the foreground, pushing back the background, and so on. So that's, that's one possibility, but I'd like to also um, uh, demonstrate a different possibility. So another arrangement I'd like to try would be based around some of the information that I got in this particular drawing where the horses and riders were going around the paddock. There were these very dark glass, black glass uh, windows uh, and actually there wasn't much light in that area and so the horses and riders were often against these very black um, black shapes and sometimes they were a little bit lost sometimes uh, they stood out with their bright colours I also want to include um, a standing jockey so I think my idea is roughly along the lines of having that standing figure there Looking over to the side, I don't think he had a whip in his hand, but I, I put a whip in his hand. I think they do that sort of thing. So I want him there. Um, it's going to be all be dark up there, and then I'm going to have 
I suppose a horse and rider in red over here. And again, I'm doing what I did with the last one. I've got a bigger foreground figure and smaller, let's get them all on, a smaller background figure. So that, you know, there's a few principles that I think I'm demonstrating with composition. If you want to get some depth into the composition, then having a difference in scale can really help. I was also trying to get movement, so I've got them going in different directions. This horse and rider that I drew, although the rider is in bright red, very colorful, um, the horse was black, so it was amazing. This black horse against the black glass. Now, I don't know how well that's gonna work, but I'll give it a try. That's the point of this stage, just to try out a few things and see um, see what works. And if it doesn't work, you know, see why it doesn't work. Is there something that can be put to use out of that, that coming to that conclusion? So um, just trying to work out what else is there. So he... This horse and rider are going to be against the black. I'll probably carry the black along. But again, a very dramatic aspect of this whole scene was it suddenly was very light down here. Uh, so I think this jockey, just have a little thought about his size. I think he will be in the light. But again, if he's got this nice green bright green colorings, then he'll stand out against the black. So I'll just do a little bit more. So that's roughly uh, my arrangement. Um, I'll just get a little bit more of the, was the architecture of these, these doors and windows. I think that adds a bit of rhythm to the composition. And with this tonal, this tonal start, I've got a useful guide, I think, for color. So I'll give that a spray and put a few colors on and see what that, see whether that become, you know, becomes something that I'd like to take further. So it has to be said, this isn't quite working yet really um, but I'm hoping that colour and maybe that dramatic tonal pattern or pattern of light and shade will be the clincher so again I'm going for big shapes uh, these big areas blocked in I wanted to get that contrast between the light area and those things against the black. I don't know if I'm the one to do the black horse against the black background. So I'm going to go for Red Rider, maybe on a chestnut. A chestnut mare. So that sort of thing. So yes, yeah, so I'm trying to do something different here, which is to do with this horse and rider in the distance, not standing out as much as the horse and rider in the fore or as the rider in the foreground. And I think I probably need to smudge things a bit just to help make that a bit more solid. Uh, so he's he's got his red gear, and if they're going to be convincing in this sort of dark space at the back, I may have to add more. Well, I think the, the smudging helps, but I may have to also add some more charcoal just to knock it back. So this is a different, yeah, a different aim really. I want something quite subtle between foreground brightness 
and background subdued effect. Um, this jockey may just be too tall. There's something he's not working as well in this study. I think he might just be too tall. Not working as well in this one as he is in the thing I did on, on site. So we'll take some inches off him. Get him into the light with his hat. So that's my next arrangement. And as I'm describing, it's a different sort of process now to see if this works. I want a lot more contrast in the foreground. So we'll sort of brighten up his colors to bring him out. That's a bit better. And I've probably got to do, I've almost got to fill in all of the Because this still needs a bit more smudging, I almost need to lose the background horse and rider a bit more and then possibly select one or two things to bring out. So that's fairly easily done just with a bit of smudging. I think my background is almost just too, too busy and eye-catching. So that's what I'd work away with in this one. That, that if you like, is the um, is what this is all, all about. That's that's the thing to develop, to emphasize. Uh, uh, it's it's curious because actually it means this this figure is slightly easier to resolve because it's just a a pattern of light and shade, as bright as I can make it. Whereas this one I want to just bring out slightly, but not too much. So that's a thing to work away at. Uh, and either, as I've been describing, resolve on this scale, or, or begin to resolve, because if I'm going to go on and do a larger piece based on this, I don't have to get it absolutely working on this scale, but I do want to sort of identify the things, the things that need my attention or the things that make a difference when I attempt to um, get the right balance between these two and maybe give this one a tail as well. So that's a couple of possibilities based on the drawings that I got from Musselburgh. I've got quite a lot of, I mean, I found it was easier to draw a side-on view for the horses. I know some brave people were doing a great job with getting the horses to turn and some other more interesting angles. So maybe if I were to work with these compositions, I wouldn't have everything horizontal. Maybe I should have uh, angled some of those bits of architecture just to add a little bit more depth you know, it could have been a bit more like that. You know, with things moving away into the distance, a little bit of perspective. So, this is the plan to try and put some of these studies from Musselboro Racecourse into, to put them to work, uh, either with a pastel painting or um, an oil study. And you'll hopefully have some material to draw on, but also there'll be reference material, I think, from the photographs that we've shared or from the day. Okay. Thank you.